In this series of videos, we've been talking about absorption versus variable costing. In the first video, I just discussed the concept. In the second video, we started in on this problem and we costed a product. And we said under variable costing, the cost was $18. Under absorption, it was $28. And that's not surprising because absorption costing absorbs, that's the, way, the reason they call it that, the fixed costs of overhead, the fixed overhead costs, where variable costing uh, doesn't. Variable costing says that's not part of the product cost. We're only interested in the variable costs incurred by the company. So uh, let's go ahead and make a couple of income statements here for this company. Uh, one using absorption costing and another using variable costing. And as I did in the first part, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to do the variable costing income statement first and the absorption costing income statement second. And then we're going to compare the two. So let's get started. Normally, I would have a proper title, Weber Company name of the statement and the date for the year ended December 31st, 2012, but I want to, or 2013, or whatever the year ended happened to be. I, I just want to uh, save space, so I'm just going to have variable costing income statement at the top here and absorption costing income statement at the top here and you know you trust me you would want to do a proper title I'm doing a bit of safe state uh, space saving here so uh, let's take a look at our variable costing income statement uh, and under a variable costing income statement they're just a contribution format income statement so we're gonna go sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin contribution margin minus fixed expenses equals net income that's it. Sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin. Contribution margin minus fixed expenses equals net income. That's our job. That's what we're going to do. So our company's sales revenue. And in fact, I can do sales for both because it's the same under either method, right? These are costing differences. They're not sales differences. So I might as well just do the sales uh, for both. So our sales, we said, well, we sold 57,000 units and the price was $50 per unit. So 57,000 times 50 means we sold $2.85 million worth of product. And I'm just going to note that on my absorption side. 2.85 million dollars. Okay, so that's our sales. Under variable costing, we want to do our variable expenses, then contribution margin, fixed expenses, net income. So our variable expenses are going to be, let's see, well, our variable manufacturing costs, which we broke down here, we said, oh, it's our variable DM, variable labor, and variable over. And we said, oh, the variable cost is 18 bucks. Let's use that number. So our variable cost, we sold 57,000. Oops. I need a new heading here. Variable manufacturing cost. And we sold 57,000. And the cost per unit was uh, 18. So 57,000 times 18 bucks is, I'm going to need a calculator for this one, 57,000 times 18, it's $1,026,000. $1,026,000. $26,000. Next up is our, if we have any other variable costs, because we got to determine. So we've got our variable manufacturing costs, which is the material, the labor, the variable MOH. We've excluded fixed overhead. And yeah, we do have other variable costs. We've got a uh, variable selling, $3. Okay, so I'm going to include that here. Variable selling. And our variable selling was $3 a unit, 57,000 units sold. $3 a unit times 57,000 units is $171,000. Uh, 
So my total variable cost, 1026 plus 171 thousand dollars, is one uh, one nine seven. Oh oh oh! I hope I did that right. I did in my head, but I feel pretty good. And that's my total variable costs, right? That's the total of my variable costs. I take my sales minus my variable costs to get my uh, contribution margin. So let's do that. Two point eight five million minus just about one point two million is going to give us. Oh, should I be doing this in my head? This is risky. One six five three oh 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 oh. I better double check that. I feel very uncertain. Uh, two eight five oh 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 minus one one nine seven oh oh oh. 1653, ah, oh, today's my day. All right, so our contribution margin is around 1.6 million. Again, sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin. RCM is 1.653 million dollars. Now we're gonna deduct out our fixed expenses. And I remember them, we had two. We had fixed overhead, and we also had fixed selling. Our fixed overhead, in the question was 600 grand. Our fixed selling was 630. So total that up, I get 1230.000 as my total total fixed expenses. So 1653 is my contribution margin. I'll deduct my fixed expenses to get my net income. 1653 minus 1230 is 433. No, 423. Let me do that again. 1653 minus 1230. Yeah, it's 423. Change that 3 into a 2. Okay. So that's my company's profit. That's the net income I'm showing under variable costing. Uh, we're going to pause the video there. We're going to stop the video there, I should say. In the next video, we'll walk through the income statement under absorption costing, and then we'll be able to compare the two, and you'll see the differences, and hopefully we can explain why they're different. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next part.